Sure. Less than 24 hours after the major league trade deadline, he is the Jays' EVP of baseball ops and the general manager, Ross Atkins. Ross, thanks for taking the time and the timing of this. No problem. Thanks for having me on, Tim. No problem. Speaking of timing, since Sunday, over and under on hours slept, if I set it at 10, are you over <laughs> 10 hours sleep or under 10 hours sleep? <laughs> over how many days did you say? I said since Sunday. Oh, since Sunday. Yeah, yeah, probably got the over on that. <laughs> you're, you're thinking yeah. about it, though. Yeah, well, the uh, the night before was definitely, it, it's interesting. I, yeah. You know, I think there's not a lot happening several nights before, after midnight. Uh, but the right. night before, there's, you know, kind of all bets are off. <laughs> all right. So let me ask you, uh, start this interview by asking you what we asked our fans yesterday and your fans yesterday. Did you like your deadline? Yeah, we were we were fired up, and we still are. I mean, we felt very good about our outcome. I think we could see some things coming together. We knew there were opportunities that we could move on. Um, you know, we, there were a couple of, of plays that uh, we were in that we would have also been excited about, but this we saw as a very good outcome for us. Around, we, we asked... Uh, our audience and around 79% of the, I guess we're at 8,000 votes by the end, said they weren't satisfied. Say what you will about our respondents. <laughs> Do you think they're underestimating what you actually got? Like, how would you respond to the idea that 79% of viewers uh, said that they weren't happy with the deadline? Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so hard for me to speculate on, you know, what their concerns are in, in uh, totality and right. to respond to that in a way uh, where I could just drill down in specific areas or compare um, some of the acquisitions that were made to other acquisitions that we could have made or talk about what uh, the cost would have been and what that would have meant long term. So um, there were other opportunities that maybe, uh, you know, I dare I say, have been more popular. Mm -hmm. um, some of that comes with name recognition I, you know i'm sure there are a lot of baseball fans who certainly in canada who know who zach pop is and certainly toronto fans know who anthony bass is and you know mitch white has been an effective starting pitcher for the los angeles dodgers that we're excited to add and everybody knows who whit merrifield is uh but yeah there were some you know superstars that, that uh that changed teams at this deadline and at this particular juncture to acquire talent we didn't have the superstar exchange, but overall, this group that we've added is a very, very good group to add to an already exciting team. Not specific names, because uh, that would do no one any good, but was there something else that you would have liked to have added that you just couldn't get done? Um, you know, not. I, I wouldn't say something else that we would have liked to have done, because we feel like we did accomplish our goals. Right. Um, there was a lot of talk about acquiring a back-end reliever and with swing and miss ability. And Bass has been one of the most effective relievers in baseball. Mm -hmm. And so he complements Jimmy Garcia and Jordan Romano and Timmy Meza and Adam Simber exceptionally well. Zach Pop has one of the best singer thinkers in fastball with a very good slider that we're exceptionally excited about, um, you know, what he can contribute as well. So other moves that could have happened, the other, the other thing that got a lot of discussion from us was talking about adding a left-handed hitter or left-handed compliments. Right. And the performance of Raimel Tapia and Kevin Biggio, with a, in addition to the performance of Luis Gurriel and Teoscar Hernandez, made that really hard to do without taking someone off right. our roster. And we feel so good about the team, the way that it's built, that Whit met Merrifield, is a very good complementary skill set because of his versatility, because of where he's been, how he's done it at what at very high levels, at the on the biggest stages. Um, really, really complements that, that our bench well, and in a way that he's going to play on a very regular basis. But it just makes our team more dynamic. Okay, I want to get to Whit Merrifield in just a quick second, but I sure. I asked the last question, uh, wondering if you knew that Stripling would need an IL stint, and then thought that Mitch White was enough to give you depth in that starting rotation? Well, we didn't, one, I would say um, we didn't know for sure that he was an IL when we were looking. We, we, were, we did want to acquire a starting pitcher. And if you look at Mitch White's performance, it's been very good as a starting pitcher when mm -hmm. he's been there. Um, so it, we, 
I, I, w- I would say this. We knew we wanted to acquire starting depth, and we did that. Right. Um, do you have enough organizational depth at that position, though, to feel comfortable? Especially with the, the reason I bring that up is we had a couple of experts on the show yesterday saying keep an eye on Alec Manoa because he's never done this before. So I guess is there a, like a, a level of concern inside the organization on your depth at starting pitcher right now? No, there isn't. We we've been one of the better starting pitching organizations in baseball this year. So re- feel really good about the group that we have, and really good about how well you say Kikuchi has thrown recently. Obviously, Kevin Gosman was phenomenal yesterday. The trend of Jose Barrios is incredible. So, All right. So you did get Whit Merrifield, and I, and I know a lot of folks are talking about this right now. Uh, fills a lot of holes. He can steal bases. I know you didn't want to comment on his vaccination last night, but do you know when he'll be available to play home games for you? Yeah, I and mean, listen, this is a this is we acquired Wit to play for the Toronto Blue Jays and he's excited to do that. And there is a clock that will start and will, you know, that timing will I, I will let him address the the timing of that and what that means. I think you could map out a calendar and and most people could determine what that potential what those potential scenarios could be for him. So you're not worried about him not playing home games at this juncture in time. He is exceptionally excited to be a part of this, and he knows what it means to play in Toronto. Understood.